Hey, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another discussion video. This time I'm going to talk about the impact that I think Janemba is going to have on the Dragon Ball Super card game as a whole. We got a lot of really good feedback on our Gogeta impact in the game video and a lot of people wanted to hear about how, they, how I think Janemba will impact the game. So I wanted to get this video out to you guys. So before I do get into this video, I do want to ask you guys to please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Or, and please uh, share this video with a friend of yours because we are doing a massive, massive giveaway in commemoration of our 1K subscriber mark. Thank you guys so much for that. Again, you guys are really supporting the channel in an amazing way. So with that being said, we're going to be doing a ginormous giveaway when set 5 comes out. I'm talking a box of set 5. I'm talking play mats. I'm talking championship packs. I'm talking tournament packs. I'm talking more and more prizes for the more and more subscribers we get by the time set five comes out so definitely tell your friends to subscribe share this video with your friends we get more subscribers you guys get more prizes multiple people win a single giveaway so that's awesome definitely do that we'll get into the discussion video so with that getting out of the way we're gonna talk about janemba and how i think it's gonna impact the dragon ball super card game so we have the janemba milliliter showcased here I will give a brief mention about the Janemba leader, the other Janemba leader that's actually come out in the set. So that is a burst two leader that attacks any anything, can attack a leader, can attack a battle card. You mill the top two cards of your deck, you draw one. When you're at four life, you can awaken, untap two, then he flips over to the other side of his effect where he uh, has a sparking five where he attacks and gains critical and draws a card. And you can discard, your, you can discard a card to activate an effect that says when your opponent activates a counter for the turn, they have to, a counter play, sorry, they have to discard three cards in their hand. So that leader on its own merit is not going to be very good going into set uh, five right off the bat, at least in my opinion. I do, in fact, enjoy the fact that it exists because it gives counter play decks a, a somewhat hard time. And if Cold Bullis is still going to be the only real relevant counterplay card to something like a Frieza leader. If another Frieza leader ever gets out of hand, something like Mecha Frieza format, something like potentially the Mass Saiyan making your opponent ditch two combined with the Mecha Frieza, if that becomes a, a viable ruling, uh, this deck that de that leader can give counterplay decks a hard time in terms of decks that played Cold Bloodlust, making them have to ditch multiple cards. So I do like that it exists. However, I don't think it's going to be incredibly meta relevant at the beginning of set five. What I do think is going to be much more meta relevant is going to be the Janemba Milliliter. So we'll get into the Janemba Milliliter. So he has a permanent that he cannot include battle cards with costs of five or more in the deck. And that's really, really weird because it, it stops him from playing one of his own on theme cards, which is, is strange. The, the movie Gogeta Leader also has the same kind of restriction, which I don't quite understand, but they decided to go to go with that for whatever reason. So we have to play with it that way. His auto, when he attacks, your opponent mills the top two of their deck and you draw one card. So he can awaken at four life and untap two, but realistically you want to win more of your games unawakened than awaken because if you're getting to an awaken point, things are getting a bit more sketchy for you because you want this game to get dragged out. You want to stay at a high, a high life total as, as long as possible so that you can mill your opponent out and deck them out and win the game that way. But if you do, however, happen to flip over, your leader still attacks, makes your opponent mill two and draw a card. And he has an auto that when when your leader is attacked, you may place one blue card from your hand to the drop area. You can negate that attack, and then you can negate that skill for duration of the turn. So that's actually a really solid effect because it's an auto, so it gets around certain things like Victory Strike, for example. So that's a really cool effect, and it's very helpful. At this deck, you play this deck incredibly defensively. I'm talking like 12 super combos, Zeno buttons, Sensu Beans. Matt Coombs is a great deck profile example on his channel for this deck, so definitely check that out if you haven't seen that yet. So. Uh, this deck is played incredibly defensively, and the entire point is to mill your opponent out. So, in my opinion, it's going to be another annoying deck to play against, much like Cell Chain, which is, which is quite annoying, much like Chain Zeno, which is quite annoying. This deck is going to be a very annoying matchup to face. However, I don't necessarily find it too, too scary. I don't think it's going to uh, be Tier 0, anything like that. I don't think it's going to... Uh, you know, take top 20 out of 32, anything like that. I think it's going to be a good deck. I think it's going to have a good showing because I think it's going to exploit a lot of weakness in certain players that just say, well, this deck draws through its entire thing in the first three turns. Let me just do that. That's not going to fly anymore. You're going to have to play a pretty conservative way to, to get around this leader. I will say, however, that certain decks do have favorable matchups against this. Wish leaders, while I won't say they have a favorable matchup, it might be a little, a little bit more along the lines of 50-50 because you do have access to the Bulma that allows you to shuffle your drop area back into your deck. So anytime this Janemba is making you mill two, you have the access to send three back into your deck and draw one. So basically offsetting what they just milled you. 
So I do like that in terms of Wish Leader's favorability in the Janemba matchups. And Janemba does have a bit of a hard time against Storm, especially when it doesn't see enough of its defensive pieces early enough. But if Storm is able to go first and put pressure on you on when they're on two energy, you're on one energy. Realistically, there's only so much you can defend. So going second against Storm is going to be very, very rough for Janemba. And Storm in, in general, aggro in general, is going to be quite rough against Janemba. I can also see Chain Zeno being a bit of a difficulty for Janemba, although with the introduction of the new Mass Sand, that's going to make Chain Zeno ditch two cards after they Chain Zeno you. I'm not necessarily sure how prevalent, how good of a call it would be to play Chain Zeno. But we'll get into the main deck cards for uh, Janemba, and we'll talk about them, kind of review them, and we'll see how they're going to impact the game. So, uh, Psyche, hope I'm pronouncing that right, Psyche Demon rocking out. So this is kind of the starter card for Janemba. It's a one cost blue. The deck is mostly mono blue with the exceptions of your Unbreakables and your uh, Infernal Villainy cells. So when you play this card, choose one. Look up top seven cards from top of your deck and add a Janemba among them. So basically a Scry 7 for a Janemba, but you also have the option to look at one card from the bottom of your deck and if it's a Janemba, you can grab it. So this kind of synergizes pretty well with the deck because a lot of the Janembas do put themselves in the bottom in order to get certain effects. So that's pretty good. It's a really good starter card for the deck. You oftentimes, if you don't already have it, you want to hit the Childish Heart Janemba. So it's 3 drop blue, 19k power, which is pretty random, but somewhat relevant, I guess, for a 3 drop. He can evolve for 2 over the Psyche Demon, and he has Barrier, so you can let him sit on board basically as long as you want, and whenever you're ready to activate main to basically evolve, you can do that. So you take 1 Janemba from your deck, send it to your warp, shuffle the deck, place this card in the bottom of the owner's deck. So that's a pretty convoluted way to say take any Janemba from your deck and evolve this card into that. So you can warp any Janemba that you want, and then you can basically take that Janemba or any other Janemba in your warp with a four drop, uh, with a cost of four and play it. So you can basically cheat Janembas in that way and get your opponent to milling more and more cards. So now we have two main mill Janembas that are four drops. We have Reality Bender, Bender Janemba being the first one. So this is definitely a strong starter card. I think that the Psyche Demon and the Child's Heart Janemba are really, really good starter cards, especially because the Childish Heart can get any Janemba out of the deck to start milling your opponent more and more. So there are crazy turns where you can mill, you know, four to six cards out of your opponent's deck and that really turbos up the game. But I do think there are a bit of consistency issues with the deck, so it's not the most consistent thing I've ever seen, but it is quite powerful when it gets its effects off. So we have two main mill Janembas, we'll get into them. The first one is Reality Bender Janemba. So critical, deflect, the main thing is that most of these do have deflect, so not even the Bloodless Leader can stop you them stop from getting milled out which is kind of uh, powerful, but like I said, some, consist some consistency issues, but we'll go into what this guy does. So if your opponent has four or more energy, and there are battle cards in your opponent's battle area, and there are no battle cards in your battle area, so basically if your opponent has a board and you do not, you can reduce the energy cost of this card in your hand by three, so it becomes a one drop. That's really powerful because you can do pretty crazy things where you mill your opponent out uh, a whole lot. If you have one of these in hand, you're able to drop it for one energy, you can go Psyche Demon into, Janem into the Child Charge Janemba and play another Janemba from deck. You can get some pretty insane turns with things like Sensu being extending your plays. So those are big, big, big combos to mill your opponent out a lot. But again, somewhat difficult to get to. So, auto at the end of the turn, place the card at the bottom of the owner's deck. So there's, there's your synergy with the uh, Psyche Demon being able to search the bottom. And place two cards top of your opponent's deck in the drop area. So that is a crazy combo that I did mention you where you can mill your opponent even six cards in one turn with your leader swing with the reality bender Janemba and getting back into the childish heart to go back into either another reality bender or the demon sword Janemba. Um, so that is pretty strong. Let's see what the demon sword Janemba does. So four drop two blue 20k crit deflect again. They all do have critical every single uh, big Janemba has critical and these two mill ones have deflect which is again really strong. So activate main you can place this card at the bottom of the owner's deck. Again, that synergy with the Psyche Demon. Choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards. Send it to the owner's warp. So you have some spot removal built in, which is really solid. Place two cards from the top of your opponent's deck in the drop area. So the nice thing about this one is that it can get itself off the board. So that if you have reality benders in hand, you could drop them cheaply. So that's a way to mill your opponent out six cards in one turn as well, if you have the ability to do that. Now, since we're looking at the Janemba cards in general, we'll look at the two off mill theme cards that I guess go better with either a different version of the mill leader deck or a different version of the other Janemba leader. So Phantom Strike Janemba, critical, auto. When this card is sent from a battle area to the warp, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and send it to the owner's warp. Then look at the bottom card of your deck and add one Janemba from the bottom of your deck to your hand. Activate main, send this card to your owner's warp so it's a way to trigger its own auto. 
If your opponent has four more energy and, and a Janemba card, isn't in play in your battle area, choose one Janemba card with an energy cost of five from your hand and play it. So that's a really nutty way to combo off and get multiple crit swings in in a turn, and that's a different build of Gemma that could honestly be potentially good. Now let's see what the five drop Gemma does that this thing can drop. So Infernal Chain Gemma, critical, auto. When you play this card, you cannot play Infernal Chain Gemma for duration of the turn. Activate main, Sparking 10. It's the first Sparking Gemma card we're seeing. So that's kind of interesting. Sparking 10 to go from no Sparking in the deck to Sparking 10. Let's see what the effect does. Place this card at the bottom of your deck, so you'll swing for a 25k crit. Probably acti activate this effect some point after that. Place this card at the bottom of the owner's deck. If your leader card is Evil Incarnate, which is any of the Janemba leaders, choose one Janemba from your warp with energy cost four or less and play it. So just by dropping this guy for four energy, you get three quick crit swings in and the ability to remove several of your opponent's battle cards, which is relatively strong. I mean, I think there's um, potentially better four drop plays and that require a bit less of a specific combo, but I do think it is a strong ability. However, the main focus of what Janemba is going to be, at least in the beginning of set five, is the mill out deck. So we have the Janemba combo deck, which I think is, I think it has the potential to be strong. I think it still needs to be cracked, but the mill Janemba is what's getting a lot of the focus right now. And as far as that goes, I do think it will be strong. Like I said, I don't think it's gonna take the meta by storm. I don't think it's gonna be Tier zero, I do think it has its weak matchups. And I do think that uh, there are cards that certainly can counter against it. And I've certainly played the deck where I've opened nothing but defensive cards, and I've only been able to just mill my opponent two every turn. And you know, it's, it was hard for my opponent to get through to me. But if I just if you just can't draw your Jemba plays, you're gonna have a bit of a hard time. So I will say the deck is going to be good, and the rest remains to be seen. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video talking about the Janemba. Uh, impact on the future of the Dragon Ball Super card game. If you guys have any thoughts about Janemba, please leave us down in the comments below. Have you been testing the deck? Have you found it to be broken? Have you found it to be mediocre? Let me know down in the comments below. I really want to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Joey. This is Crossbow TCG, and I'll see you next time.